Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes, future results are not guaranteed, and finally, any investment decision you make is still your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. As always, we are starting off with the gold daily chart. And, you know, we've been watching this downtrend line here uh, for the past week, week and a half. And we said we had a decent wedge with this support level. Um, you know, if I wanted to, I really could double click on here and drag it on down to where our new, uh, looks like interaction is going with price. Um, but it also looks like we're making a move downwards towards the 50 moving average. We said that before, but each time, and I guess, let me drag it back on up. Every time we have broken this area, the buyers have come in and said, we have value here. So you know, this 1790 and this 1770 range definitely seems to be where the buyers are finding volume. And we can see on our one hour time frame the accumulation of volume here. So the buyers are trying. They definitely are trying. Uh, so we'll have to see what that means to our currency pairs. So let's go. The euro dollar. Well, we've entered a new range. What we talked about uh, last week was how, you know, each time the market came out of the 1.4, 1.45 range, uh, just kind of averaging, each time we've got out of it, uh, we, we were pulled right back into it. Uh, pulled right back into it. The wicks brought us back into it. So now that we're out of it again, you know, the market started making its move up. Now, what was once support is probably going to be resistance. And now we're starting to get a little sideways action here. So we'll have to uh, play by ear. Our new range that we're watching is 1.39 down to 1.34. We can see on a one hour time frame, you can see the sideways action, but you can also see that we are in a neutral zone and we're still, still below our, our long term moving average. Uh, currently, we can see that the dollar is in control, just fractionally. They're both negative, those, but the dollar is in control. But we can see for the most part we have parallel on top of action, and that's why for the most part we have sideways action. When the dollar made its move up here, we had the down move here in the pair. So what we can see is the sideways action of the euro, a little trend higher. Sideways action on the dollar, a little trend higher. Uh, if the dollar does take, take control, maybe we'll see a move back down to this trend line. Uh, but right now, we can see just fractionally that the buyers are in control over the sellers, but we are neutral like we are in a neutral zone. Here we are with the pound dollar, and we're watching this new range, 1.59 down to about 1.57. And we're really just putting in some sideways action here. Sideways action, lighter volume. Uh, we're going to need volume to either, either get back into this uh, range or to get pushed down lower. Um, and like we said before, what was one support is probably going to be resistance. Just fractionally on our time frame, we are in a neutral zone. But you can really see this sideways action. Sideways action in this... This was the price level we were watching before, so we still have it. Pretty soon, I'll come in here and draw probably something around uh, right in here. I'll probably draw something here at the 1.57 uh, just to see what's going to happen. Uh, but not yet. I, I, you know, We'll have to see. But we know if we do break 
726 that we probably will move lower but we can see that the dollar has remained in control but for the most part we can see just a parallel action no divergence no convergence just one on top of the other and that's why we have our sideways action the pound averaging to the sideways dollar averaging sideways here the, it says the buyers are in control but just like the euro uh, dollar uh, just fractionally neutral we are not really seeing either really being in control finally we go to the dollar franc and we're um, a little sideways action our first real inside bar type day here uh, our range that we're watching now is uh, 0.853 and 0.89 200 moving average acting as resistance here but we are starting to pull down today's action Probably if I would have drew a downtrend line, it's on the verge of breaking out of that. We'll have to see. But we also, again, have the 200 moving average here. We also see the sideways action here. And remember, we had how many um, inside bars? Six inside bars. Um, so we got a lot of sideways action here also. Uh, we can see the dollars in control. We got a little divergence here, a little bit. And that's what allowed for this move up for the past day on Friday. Sideways action on the franc, but a little t turn down. So when we got a little move up here uh, after the sideways action of the dollar, that's what allowed the dollar to take control. And another one, uh, just fractionally the buyers are in control. For all three pairs, the buyers are in control, but they're all in neutral zones. So we really need some volume to come in and kick these pairs out of this range and enter a new range. Or so let's see what happens here again as we go from Sunday into Monday, whether or not we can get that volume, whether or not we can see some of these pairs break out of their range. As we come to our watch list for this weekend, we're starting off with our low volatility watch list. This is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands, watching the, the price level of the high and upper and lower bands. And for that one, we're going to be watching the pound dollar. Uh, there were a couple other ones. The Aussie dollar was interesting, but this one was the closest one to setting up. Now, what's really interesting is our inside bar watch list. This is watching today's range or Friday's range in compared to Thursday's range. So, we really have, are probably going to set the record for the most inside bars uh, uh, that we've ever had listed. We've got the euro dollar, the pound dollar, the dollar franc, and then all the yen currency pairs, dollar yen pound yen and the euro yen. I don't think we ever had six. Um, so hopefully what that will mean is that the market paused on Friday and is willing to make a move on uh, Sunday into Monday. So as we continue to talk about how to build a trading plan and, and why we need trading plans, we have to talk about uh, mental preparedness. We've been talking about the fears all the time and that they're, if it's as simple as following a trading plan, everybody would be rich. But uh, as it says here, an essential part of the philosophy of trading is the mental preparedness needed to confront our weaknesses. And, you know, again, I was working with a client on Wednesday, and that is her issue. It, it is the, 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 the fear or the psychology, the, 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 the comfort level in trading. And the way, as I've been saying over and over again, one of the ways that we get over that is by documentation. When you practice time and time again and you get that routine and that those triggers down and those what your eye and your pattern recognition down and no it's not the same when you go live when you go live taking heat live is much different than taking heat fake even no matter how real you take virtual trading but when we have documented proof it's hard to ignore that proof so the preparedness that we uh, that we take to prepare ourselves mentally and to prepare our system and to document it, it helps us confront the weaknesses of, oh, should I take this trade or should I didn't? It, uh, we don't want to rule out intuition. We don't want to rule out a feel uh, uh, you know, for the market, but we do want to have some um, rules as to when and when we are not trading. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our same resources, um, our free high probability trading course. It's five videos that will help you develop your own high probability trading setups. 
It will give you a guide into who we are as coaches, and that's where we can make a difference. We can help you develop that trader's mindset, that mental preparedness, so that you can follow your system. Cash back for your trades. If you're trading Forex, it doesn't change the spreads or trade conditions. It's just rebates for your trades, so take advantage of that. And, of course, if you are looking for signals, we have that, but make sure it matches who you are as a trader. A ton of providers. You can get the signals to trade them yourself or have it automatically traded. In the end, it doesn't make a difference about your system or indicator, but it, if you can't pull the trigger, and one of the ways that we uh, fight that battle of being able to pull the trigger, trigger is mental preparedness, documentation, knowing our system, and being prepared to trade each and every day. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.